All right, so I've got the, the USB interface installed now. So I've got the power cab plugged in. I've got the interface plugged in to the, the panel. And I've got the cable going off here to the computer. And according to the, the NCE instructions, I need to download a driver. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and download that driver now. And then we'll switch it on for the first time and we'll see what happens. Okay, so before I switch it on, I was having a quick look at the manual again. Now, there are these jumpers here. Uh, four jumpers here at the back. And it's saying for the power cab, which is what I have, that I'll have to remove all the jumpers. So, if you've got a different sort of NDC... Uh, DCC system you may still need to have the jumpers in but for the power cab we'll need to take them all off okay all right now let's keep going okay so everything's ready to go the jumpers are set now I'm just going to switch the power on and we'll see what happens Okay, so I've got track power, power cab is working, and I'll fire up the software and see if we can get some sort of communication going on. Okay, so a couple of hours has passed now since I first fired up the system, and I've been having a lot of troubles getting the rogue rail software to communicate with the power cab. Now, one thing I have found out is is the best way to install the driver is to connect your cab bus wire and disconnect this cable, fire up your power cab, plug in the uh, computer cable and then just let Windows download the right driver for you and uh, that seemed to be the best way to get it to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm installing the JMRI software and I'm going to have a go at uh, using that one and hopefully I can get some more success okay so the power cabs on the JMRI software is installed and I'm going to fire up for the first time and it's hopefully something will happen this time so I'm going to fire up Dakota Pro 3 blowing up Right now, it's going to take me through a setup for the first time, okay. Alright, so I'll set this up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so in the setup, it's asking me for the manufacturer, that'll be NCE. The system connection will be the NCE USB. Now, the serial port, there's the Silicon Lab driver that was installed for the USB, so I'll choose that one. System is the power cab. It's asked me for the connection prefix, which I don't know what it is. Connection name, NCE. So we'll just keep going, see what happens. Okay, we finished it and it will start the Coda Pro. So we'll just hit the finish button and hopefully it'll fire up. Okay, so it should be firing up the Coda Pro for the first time now. Now. Okay, so there's still a little, more, little bit more setup work here to do, so I'll keep setting this up and come back to it. Okay, so I've gone through all the uh, setting up all the preferences and stuff for JMRI. Now it asked me for what sort of decoder I had in my my loco 
and I set it up as a tsunami sound diesel for the Intermountain and it's got, even got the model number here of, of what the, uh, the train is so it's been added up the top there and so far so good so I just want to quickly show you something on the, the USB interface So when I fired up the JAR and my software, as you can see, there's an LED here that's come on, which is showing that the power cab wire here is not only is it working, but they're communicating to the power panel. There's another LED here on this side, and I can only assume that one comes on when you're actually programming. So I'm going to try and uh, see if I can program the CVs on the loco now. Okay, so I've set up the train as I showed you before. So I'm just going to double click on it now and go into another mode. And you can actually drop in a picture of your loco. So if I this box down. I'm just going to drag in this image. The same image for there. We'll save that. I can also, because I'm running Dakota Pro, this is going to allow me to change my CVs right here. And you can see I've got the mask control volume, all the different volumes uh, for the, the sound. There's a whole bunch of tabs here across the top, which would allow you to change pretty much any CV on, or well not pretty much, all the CVs on the decoder. Now of course you can actually, you don't need the computer software, you can actually change the CVs just using the handheld throttle. But uh, this is a lot more interesting, you can see it all over here in front of you and get feedback from all the CVs. There's another side to the JRMI called Panel Pro, and uh, I'll be setting up uh, some sort of uh, train control in the Panel Pro. Now I've never used this software before, so it may actually take me some time to learn what's really going on here. But I highly recommend the JMRI software. I've never used it before. I've just downloaded it, and straight away I have connection to my computer with little uh, fuss at all so uh, it's pretty good